if you see clumps of oil or what is sometimes being referred to now as tar balls on your child's skin, you should wash it off immediately with soap and water. You do not need to use any special chemicals or solvents or oil cleaners on your child's skin. Again, if you see oil in the water or oil clumps, um, you really, the children should not be swimming in the water. In addition, um, if you see them on the beach and you want to stay on the beach, you should warn your children not to touch these tar balls. Um, I think you need to use your common sense regarding um, limiting or even avoiding exposure um, due to the adverse health effects of this oil spill, which is one of the reasons that these advisories are putting, being put out. If you are on the beachfront and or uh, you see oil or smell oil, you need to use your common sense and leave the area. It means diesel fuel and crude oil. Uh, the constituents of these contain something called volatile organic compounds which vaporize in the air and can cause an odor. Um, and there is concern that if you're swimming in the water or on the beach, you will then be able to smell this uh, odor. Um, these hydrocarbons can cause irritation of the eye, the nose, the back of the throat. They can cause a flu-like illness if the odor is very strong, like headache, dizziness, nausea, and vomiting. They also uh, have um, issued the swimming advisories because there are clumps of oil uh, that can get onto your skin. Um, if they're washed off very quickly, they shouldn't cause a problem, but they can cause some skin irritation. And if left on the skin for a prolonged period of time, may even cause a mild burn. So the reason the swimming advisories have been issued is especially for vulnerable cohorts of people like young infants, small children, people with asthma, respiratory conditions, or the elderly who may be more susceptible to respiratory irritants, which may uh, further exacerbate their disease. Or we know there's just individual susceptibility to smells and odors, which may cause irritation. In addition, young infants and young children's skin is much thinner than school-age children and adults. So the oil and some of the volatile compounds may actually permeate into the skin. If there's a brief exposure to any of these chemicals, either through breathing them in or on your skin, we really are not concerned about any long-term health effects. Um, however, it is the workers that are participating in the cleanup process and or people who live near the beach uh, and, and the waterfront where wind may bring these odors closer to their homes, um, um, i.e. exposing them on a chronic basis, we're not sure about the long-term health effects. What we do know is that some of these chemicals particularly some of the volatile uh, hydrocarbons as well as what are called uh, PAHs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, with long-term chronic exposure can have the potential to cause some long-term health effects. But again, with brief exposure, either via the water or sitting on the beach with a brief inhalation exposure, once the exposure ceases and does not continue, we don't expect any long-term adverse health effects. There's concern about uh, the consumption of seafood given the oil spill because some of the chemicals uh, that are in crude oil and the petroleum distillates may then settle into the sediment of the ocean from which then the fish feed on. And there's concern that with long-term exposure, the fish and the cell, uh, shellfish will become contaminated with particular chemicals as well as some heavy metals. 
Right now, any seafood you buy in the grocery store at, or at a retail store is safe to eat because it is under strict government regulations. Again, it's important to use your common sense. If you're in the area and buy any type of fish, well, wherever you are, and it smells like oil, or if you take a bite and it tastes like oil, then you shouldn't eat it. However, I believe the Food and Drug Administration is closely monitoring uh, the seafood and the levels of chemicals in them. They have a process outlined already, and uh, most of the fishing waters in Mississippi, uh, Louisiana, and Alabama to Panama City have been closed to fishermen.